Welcome back. If you could like, comment, and subscribe, I'd appreciate it. Anything you could do for the channel helps me put more back into the channel for you. With that being said, we're one rotor down on to the next housing. This is where I'm at with this guy right now. So, kind of skipped ahead a bit. Uh, I already have this next seals in, and I already have the apex seals in along with their springs. I'm going to show you guys at least what I'm going to do in order to uh, put the center iron on, and then I'll show you basically putting on the housing and the rotor, and then it's rinse and repeat for however many rotors you have. Um, for this one, basically, I have the apex seal corners. Uh, or bits just kind of sticking out. They I don't glue them together like I see a lot of people do, mainly because I just didn't have super glue. But you know I'm sure there's a proper reason in there somewhere. <laughs> Essentially, when I put the center iron on, it will push those all in, and I'll just have to keep an eye on it as I go to make sure it's all going to seat properly. Um, there should be a problem when I put this on of me having to lift this up while shimming on the center iron. So, pretty obviously that part's not going to get recorded. <coughs> I also didn't feel like waiting until about 5 p.m. for it to warm up around here. That's like 40 degrees outside. But anyway, I'm going to get this on real quick. And if there's anything I can actually show you guys during that, then I'll try to record it. Otherwise, um, the thing I mentioned before, when you're putting in these uh, coolant seals, like right there, where you see that green, that's actually where the seal is joined together. You want to make sure you have that on the intake side, which is, in this case, the top right corner, because this is exhaust. Cool. Hottest. Second hottest. So you don't want that joinery to be right where the main combustion is, and you don't want it to be where the combustion is getting exhausted. You want it to be where the cooler air is coming in and keeping everything else cooled off. Anyway, I'm going to struggle for probably the next hour. Let's see how this goes. Or it's uh, less than a minute later and that went really, really easily. So basically just put this on here, kind of had it cocked, pulled this up, this pretty much just fell down. Then all I had to do was center it on the dowels. Let's hop the top back up. I don't use the next oil. This is a rag that I kind of just soaked with some nice clean oil. And then this wiping this on the mating surface. That way the rotors have something lubricating to work with until the oil injectors start kicking in. It's going a lot easier than it feel like it should be. <laughs> it's probably because I spent almost two years now working on this and researching. So we'll put in our dowels that also are, at least one of those is actually a coolant, or not coolant, an oil passage. Um, then the next one's the fun part because we've got to put our coolant rings in here and then flip this over and hope they don't fall out. They're probably going to. I'm probably gonna have to use a little bit of my uh, silicone again to hold those in. <coughs> See if I can actually show you guys putting one of these things on. So there's two sides, there's a white side and there's a black side or essentially a colored side. Because both of these uh, coolant rings or seals or gaskets, whatever you wanna call it, are like that. It's not easy to hold the camera and do this at the same time. Basically, you just want to make sure the colored side is always facing up and out. You don't want it to turn like you see it's doing now. Kind of. There we go. So like black side, white side, with the black side facing up and out. And as you push this in, the gasket's going to want to fold over like that. So use two hands, follow it through, and make sure there's no twists in all of it. And then do the other one. This one's significantly stiffer. This is the one that actually failed on the last one. And of note, the bottom end is where the exhaust is. You can see where the uh, spark plugs go. And you can see the joinery right here where there's actually a bit of a crease. So flip that over and make sure that's up here. I'm going to spend a couple minutes putting this in now. Oddly enough, that went in a little bit easier than I feel like it should have. Um, unfortunately, I do still need to put silicon on there just to hold it in. It's going to do like little tacks here, 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 and here, more or less. <sighs> but so far, this is going pretty smoothly. I don't need to douse this thing. It'll be fine. Just like a little bit enough to hold the, the little gasket in place. 
try not to put any on this side of the metal shaving that way it doesn't get squirted inside of the uh, combustion chamber or intake or exhaust when you tighten everything down but I'm gonna put that on I'm gonna flip this over and smack her right on there well honestly that's the hard part done is gonna be the center iron that's notoriously the hard part for everyone isn't it cracked no it's not this is a lot of carbon so now that that's done the rest of it should go pretty easily I'm just gonna put that on here put the rotor in here which I'll show you that uh, put the apex seals in which I'll show you that as best I probably show you one of those because it's the same for all three corners and then after that that part goes on top and it's done so yippee so I'll get this silicon up real quick alrighty and now we got that good on um, so the next step here is actually to oil well, simultaneously cleaning uh, the inside of the housing that way when I put down the rotor it'll be good I've already done this to, of course, the other side of the iron on the other one. So we'll do it to this side of the iron on this one. And then I've already done it to the e-shaft the other day. So that is good to go. Um, point of reference is the eccentric shaft. The lobe is facing upwards. On the other one is facing downwards. And the other one, uh, the apex point is facing downwards. So this one it needs to be facing up. <coughs> Also, you can see there's no gears over there. That's where the gear is for the eccentric shaft. So we need that gear face facing up. So we're going to take this guy. We're going to orient him properly. We're going to grab him with one hand because I'm trying to hold this to record this. And hopefully we don't drop anything. Because this is less than easy. Ooh. She's in place. Realistically, this is only going to be able to get held in one way. So, now comes the fun part of getting all of the apex seals in. <coughs> Let's come over here. It's actually pretty nice that this table is getting cleared up because I can see shit now. There is our apex seals. That one is thoroughly loops. So we'll actually use him first. Then there's the rest of our shit. So, we're going to come over here with our first apex seal. And we're going to shove them down into all of these grooves since he's already pre-lubricated. Uh, you want the little pointy bit facing outwards. So just kind of shove them in here. Or you can just to get them started. There we go. Started going down now. Going down, going down, going down. He went down far enough, which was barely a nubbin sticking out. We're going to do that to the other guys. So that means that he's far enough. He's not touching but it's far enough down that it is interacting with the other corner seal and it is going through. We'll have to see with one of these if I can show you what it's like when that is not the case. But this is the entire point of me lubricating everything so much and then using the uh, greases is that I shouldn't have any problems. I'm trying to record this while also doing this and not dropping this down a coolant passage actually this one i think ended up getting turned a little bit there we go got and turned back should be enough and straight down and in that this last one is kind of starting it over here yeah here we go got that guy started in go straight down no problem now, you want to leave a little bit sticking out, at least that's what I'm doing, because you want to be able to pull these guys back out so we can put these springs on them. There's a little bit of a process to that, too. So we're going to start with this guy over here. Actually, make sure. Ooh, he actually getting stuck a little bit, so we're going to need to wiggle this one. Why are you getting stuck? That's not good. <clears throat> and my knees dirt and kill me because I'm kneeling down on concrete. So yeah, this is what it's like when one gets stuck. There's about well, that much sticking out. Essentially, it's not uh, allowing itself past the uh, corner seal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use with my camera hand, grab the rotor and kind of twist it while I'm poking this up and down. I won't be able to really record that, unfortunately. All right, that was a pain in the dick. Um, 
That's actually the one at the top. <laughs> the uh, spring underneath the corner. So if you guys have been following along, managed to get this all entirely turned around. Probably was when I installed it and just wasn't paying attention. So when I was pushing it down, I felt springiness. I'm like, that's not good. So I had to pull the entire rotor out. Uh, thankfully, everything stayed packed into it. Nothing stayed stuck to the uh, center iron. So I didn't have to worry about that. I just had to take out that one corner seal, fix the spring, put it back in. And without the springs in the apex seals, I put them in enough so that they were engaging with both corner seals. And then I put the rotor in. So they should all stay perfectly straight now. I can pull each one out a little bit, put the small spring in, slide it in. Then I'm going to feed the larger apex spring in behind that. And then I'm going to push it down on the larger apex spring until it engages with the apex seal. And then it'll go down into the rotor. And that's how I did the other one. So I'm going to do this one. Seeing somebody do it. I think I was right potential. I see him do that. And I was like, that makes a lot more sense because I don't really feel like super gluing this stuff. Because I don't want to go to the store and get super glue. So we're going to take a small and a big spring. I'm going to bring them over here. Uh, I'm going to do my best to be able to show you guys this. This is kind of a two handed process though because I can't really hold these springs right. So, first, we're going to pull out a uh, apex seal straight up and out. There we go. Pull it out enough so that I can demonstrate. You can see this little lip right there. That is where the small spring sits against. This is going to be a miracle if I can actually do this with one hand. I'm going to come around. I'm going to get that to engage with it there. This is the tedious part because it is not super glued. So engage that there. And then bring my hand in to hold this flat against the rest of the seal. Damn, it just twisted on me. Come on, there we go. Oh God, don't pull that out. Push that back in. <laughs> This is going to be the tedious part. Actually, I'm going to start recording. I'll get it in partially started. You guys see what I'm trying to do. All right, so we got that pressed against the lip on the other side. There's the lip on this side where that also rests against when it's fully compressed with the other spring. So we got that started in. I'm going to push this down while holding on to the spring so it doesn't slide up. And then we're going to take our bigger spring and we're going to feed it behind that. Barely. I do need to compress the spring with the other spring a little bit for this to work. Oh, come on. Oh, that hurts. <clears throat> Stab my finger with the apex seal. There we go. We got it started. And then that just goes in. Then we push down on this until it makes up with this. And then the whole thing goes down as one. So use some pliers there so I stop hurting my finger. So on this, we want to push down on the spring in order to push this down and in. We want to try to make sure that is a bit more recessed. Now there's a problem with it, of course. And my back is killing me. There we go. Now it went in. And then for the corner seal, this is the really bizarre part. You want to set it up about like that, or so you have that uh, lip where the spring sets on. And you just want to put it in there, rest it on, push it down a couple times, make sure it's working good. And this is where that sits. And then when you put the last iron on, it's going to put that uh, apex seal corner back in. Everything's going to sit nice and flush. Rinse and repeat two more times. And then we can start putting in some tensioner bolts. All right, just got some stuff in my eyes. Soon as I hit record, but apex seal, apex seal, apex seal. All the corners are in, everything is ready to go. Which is honestly a bit weird, but you know, finally we're here. 
So next, <clears throat> grab our rear iron. <sighs> Clean the face, make sure it's ready to go. Just put it on top and that's, oh no, <laughs> I almost forgot. We gotta do our cooling seals over there. Whoops. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe this down real quick though. Let some of the oil seep into the uh, casting. <laughs> Oh, the last of our seals. This is going to be nice and easy. We don't need to silicone these guys down at all. We just need to find the joinery and make sure it goes to the top right where the intake is. And then we go all the way around. This isn't going to really be entertaining for you guys, so I'll get this on. I'll get that on. And yeah, this thing's almost going to be done. Alrighty, keg is assembled. Uh, played around with some stuff. I decided to go through, I should uh, clean up those tension bolts really well. And after that's done, I'll put those guys in and I have the engine hoist ready to pick this up because it's pretty damn heavy right now. So, I'm trying to clean out some of the debris. Bits of random silicon. Uh, got the rear main seal in already. I think I already did the front main seal. Actually, no, that goes under there. So I still need to do that before I put that cover on. Once that's done, that can go on. Actually, no, I need to put the, uh, let's see if I can zoom in. Nope, that's not zooming in. Uh, anyway, I need to put the uh, oil pump drive on. And then I can start assembling everything. And of course, one of the bits along here is going to be putting on the sewn adapter, which is going to be really nice and easy since, uh, you know, the engine's outside of the car. <laughs> So, thanks you guys for coming along for the ride next time. Hopefully we'll be making some really good progress. Uh, if you could like, comment, or subscribe, I'd appreciate it. Anything you do for the channel helps me put more back into the channel for you. That being said, I will see you next time. Have a good one.